Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for your time. My name is Dustin Ray. I am a senior network architect here at Comport Technology Solutions. And today we're going to take a look at HPE Aruba's ClearPass Policy Manager and Guest Engine. A lot of times in today's world, we see a lot of authentication issues. We see a lot of scary attacks that are coming through the security grapevine every day. What ClearPass is going to do is help you secure your network in a very easy to set up way while still giving you the granular level of access that you would need as a network administrator, as a CTO, as a CEO, or anybody in your organization to securely authenticate corporate users, guests, and devices, and lock them down to exactly what level of access they need. From here, I'd like to show you exactly how ClearPass operates by going directly into the policy manager and showing you how to set this up. To start, what we see is our dashboard view. This is a fully customizable web interface. So as you can see, we have a lot of different apps up here. We can see the cluster status if we have multiple ClearPass servers. We also have our device categorization. This is for your end user devices that are being monitored by ClearPass authentication services. So you see we have a lot of IoT. We have switches and computers. But if you don't like the way that this looks, you want to add in something else, what we can do is we can drag and drop. And quickly, you see that the interface changes to meet what exactly what you want to see. And in this case, I put in health status. But we do have field authentications. We have endpoint profile, or we have device family. We already have device categorization. But there's a lot of different options that we can have here. One other thing I'd like to point out is our Quick Links tab. I would always recommend that you have this available because this gives you quick, easy access that's fully clickable in between your various parts of ClearPass Policy Manager or the ClearPass Guest Engine. So this makes your life a lot easier. To start, let's take a look at monitoring. What is ClearPass? ClearPass is an authentication service. ClearPass authenticates users just like your Radius server would. It can even tie into things like Radius, Directory, TACX. So if you have any of those services already running on servers, you don't have to rip, them, rip and replace. ClearPass offers easy, quick integration with that or any third-party networking or server equipment. So ClearPass works with Cisco, ClearPass works with Dell, ClearPass works on HPE with Aruba, or they work with Comware switching, or even Arista. So you have a lot of options, and it's meant to be an overlay for network access control. From the live monitoring tab, as you can see on the left, what we can see from Access Tracker is a live running feed of everything that is authenticating against this particular ClearPass server. Um, and if you do want to reference, this is a great way to where you can filter. You can see exactly which server we're accessing. And we're looking at one day before today. So if we want to, we can do one week. If we show that. And we don't have a lot of records in here, but that's okay. There's not, there's not been a lot of activity over the past few days. As you continuously use your ClearPass server, it's going to add more and more features or more and more data into this, uh, into this particular screen. So you would actually be able to roll this back for however long you have the ClearPass server up and running. Um, in this case, it's, it's a fairly new server. But what we can see from here, we can see this is me right here from where I logged in as an admin. So we used a TACX policy, and you can see uh, authentication status pass. We can take a look at some of the details from when I logged in. You can see the date and local time. This is local to the ClearPass server, so this is a remote server. Um, I'm on the East Coast, but this server is actually out in Santa Clara, California, so this is in Pacific time. We can see the client IP, the remote uh, IP address that I'm accessing from. We can see some high-level authorization attributes. This goes back to the um, Aruba seal enablement lab. Uh, this is where they host a lot of their demo equipment. So you can actually see the common name, the domain control, organizational units, all that were pinged while I was trying to authenticate. You can even see what policies within ClearPass that were applied to me as a local management user. Um, this is the service name right here. This is, uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a second, but 
This is the actual policy that was applied when I logged on. So this includes all of my enforcement information, my profiling, my device type, my health assessments, everything. Authorizations, we can see again exactly when I passed through and was accepted onto the network. And then alerts, if you see any of the rejected tabs, you would start to see information here about why it was rejected. So if we close this one out, let's take a look at what the alerts say. This is a rejected. Um, there is actually a nice, very easy tie-in to Aruba Airwave. So if you're using that for network management, network monitoring, um, you can actually click this and it will take you directly into your Airwave server and to that specific device. So you can begin troubleshooting. Well, let's take a look at alerts. We can see a ton of information here. We're not going to go over everything, but very quickly we can see the user wasn't found. So in the endpoints repository, which this particular device was authenticating against, we can easily see that this user wasn't found, so they were knocked off the network, they were preventing from accessing. And from an IT management perspective, this is key. This is very crucial to be able to quickly know why somebody or some device or uh, some location is having connection issues. You can come right here and within seconds find out exactly why they can't get on the network. We can also take a look at our configuration. Uh, there was a lot more information in monitoring, but we're not going to cover that right now. From configuration, let's go into services. So earlier I mentioned services are the policies that were applied to me as a local management user, and you can see this was the first one that was applied, and it's also the first one in the hierarchy. But there are a lot of services in this particular server. We can see everything from ClearPass single sign-on that operates Cisco TACAX. We can see a Cisco VPN authentication. We can see IBM. These are all custom policies that are built around specific types of authentication against certain devices. From this screen, we can also see what type of authentication it is. Is it a radius authentication request? Is it TACX? Is it an application-based? Or is it web authentication? Uh, all of this information is really crucial to know, and you can customize this to however you want once you start writing your own policies. But if we take a look at Ruba Social Guest Access with Mac caching, we can see our service rules here. We can see that the connection type must match or must not match um, any that we've seen before. The SSID has to be this name right here. So if it's connected from an SSID that's not named exactly this, this service will not be applied. And then in the username, it has to contain a social type of login. So this could be LinkedIn, this could be Facebook, this could be Google+, this could be a number of different things. And you can see the authentication methods that were configured here. So we can see that clearly ClearPass Policy Manager, ClearPass Policies themselves, highly customizable, but you can go into granular levels and assign authentication types and protocols that they can run, sources that they can cite for specific services. So we're not talking at the group level, we're talking about this specific service. The authorization, where they go for the authorization details. Is it the endpoints repository? Is it guest device repository? Is it the guest user database? And these are all local to ClearPass. These aren't even external servers. The role mapping policy that was configured and applied to this, and then the enforcement policy. Enforcement is what's gonna happen once they've authenticated, where they get placed in the network and what access they can have. If we go back to our dashboard, we can access ClearPass Guest. And this is going to open it up into the browser tab. From here, we will immediately go into the guest management page. This is where you can create guest accounts, guest splash pages, um, onboarding information if you need to support a BYOD infrastructure. So immediately you go into here, we can see that we can manage accounts, and these are guest accounts. You can create, you can create in bulk if you need to. Or if you're not sure where to start, the wizards that are provided to the guest portal are a really great way to start looking at what you want to do as a guest admin. And if you want to set up somebody, your receptionist, um, the front desk worker, or individual people within the company that support IT from a help desk level, you can give them a guest administration credential for ClearPass guests, and this is basically all they would see. 
So they could create guest accounts, delete guest accounts. They would just manage who's on your network as a guest and when and where they can access. They can't actually access any of the policy manager information, so you don't have to worry about configuration changes happening. If we go here to configuration, this is where you'll begin to set up your web pages, where you'll set up receipts, self-registration, social logins, a variety of different things. If we go to pages, then web logins, we can take a look at all the web pages that ClearPass has built for guest authentication. Let's take a look at one of these. So let's take a look at UCLA's demo. When a guest comes onto their network, this is the web interface that they interact with and see as they log in. As you can see, there's not a guest self-registration portal anywhere here, so somebody has to provide them credentials. But this was all built, designed, and customized specifically for them. You can add in pictures, logos. You can have a slideshow go on in the background. Include marketing information. You can include advertisements if you want your guests to be able to see local discounting and coupons that you have. And from here, they can throw in their user credentials, log in, and then they have access to the network. You can also configure guest self-registration. Guest self-registration is a, definitely a rich tool to have because it makes your life as the IT administrator a lot easier. They are managing themselves at this point. They are logging themselves on, they're creating their own user credentials, and their accounts can expire however and whenever you want. So this is a very easy way to configure guests in a way that you don't really have to touch once it's set up. If you need an account, we'll click into here. And we'll accept the terms and conditions. And we'll register. Once they register, they even get to see a nice receipt page that they can have texted to their phone number. They can have emailed if you would prefer them to have an email receipt. They can download this if they're on a desktop and print it out. There's a variety of different things that you can do to make sure that your guests don't forget what their user credentials are. Once they've registered, you log on and they immediately get access to the network through an authenticated source. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your time. If you have any questions, please reach out to info at comport.com.